Professor Pierre Prion has already chaired the session, in fact, the first one yesterday. He's a very well-known expert on Iran's antiquity history, and he's going to be talking about a very exciting project which brings technology to our knowledge of our rich ancient past. Each speaker will have about 22 and a half minutes for presentation. Uh, I leave all options open to monitor and implement that uh, time, uh, emphasis being on uh, preserving some space for contributions from the floor, which is, I think, is equally uh, an important part of the deliberation. So, Pierre, à vous, s'il vous plaît. So, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Uh, the title of my talk is on the screen. As the founder of the Accumulate program, now housed in, at and by Le Louvre Museum in close collaboration with the College de France, and as the current chair of the International Scientific Committee of the program, I am particularly happy that the organizers did accept to include in the program of this meeting a specific communication devoted to a specific way of safeguarding cultural heritage in general, and more specifically, Iran cultural heritage, and even more specifically, the accumulated cultural heritage. I have been dreaming for long of a gigantic exhibition, even more gigantic than the one remarkable which was organized at the British Museum some years ago under the scientific authority of John Curtis, a gigantic exhibition which would gather a very large number of objects coming from different parts of the Achaemenid Empire and giving the public an accurate image of what has been the empire for more than two centuries. Requiring the collaboration of such a number of different countries of Middle East from Istanbul to Kabul. Uh, this very large scale project is probably unfeasible, unfeasible today. There is another way more feasible to create an academic exhibition on a permanent and universal basis. I refer, of course, to the internet, which allows us to collect and to organize this heritage on a scientific basis and to make it available to anyone, anywhere, at any time. In a short presentation published in 2006 in the magazine ICOM News, I explained that a genuinely virtual museum makes a direct contribution to the work of safeguarding a unique cultural heritage. What it is true for the uh, virtual museum is true for the entire Accumulate website and program, which, on the long term, will gather and make available not only the visual and archaeological Achaemenid heritage, but also the treasure of textual documentation in every script and every language of the empire. I take treasure in the double me meaning of a Greek thesaurus, a hoard, and a storehouse at the same time. The space and time I will consider is not only Persia and Iran proper, but all the territories and people once dominated by the Achaemenid kings from the Indus to the Mediterranean and from Central Asia to the Gulf and to Egyptian Western Desert. Each of these territories has given birth to a large amount of archaeological and iconographical remains dated to the Achaemenid period. They are currently either located in situ, as uh, shown in many communications in this meeting, or are housed in a great number of libraries and museums, themselves located in a great number of countries. 
In the first part of my talk, I will very briefly recount the history of the program on the period 2000-2015. Then in the second part, I will present the new website and its database. And I will thirdly finish with the perspective open up from 2015 to, I hope, the very long term. The program was first conceived in the fall 1999. Uh, the, it was uh, called at this time akemeni.com. When I was elected at the Collège de France, at this date, the name Akemenet was chosen. The first try for the home page was created. The organization of the planned database and website were decided. A few colleagues proposed to collaborate. The first one was Francis Joannes, an assyriologist specialized in the first millennium documentation. And in July, in July 2000, the f a first public demo was made at the Rencontre Assyriologique Internationale, which took place at the Collège de France. Please do observe on these slides. Yes. Uh, at this stage, there was an uh, entry for. Uh, sorry. Monet, an uh, image, and also tablet and so the Persepolis. Uh, this entry was planned, but they were not really open because the technical tools did not allow us for that, them at this time. During the following years, we worked hard in order to enrich the database and to entirely refurbish the website thanks to using new tools. It was done in 2005. During the years 2001-2006, we made agreements with several museums in order to get the permission to use photographs of the Akemid objects which were housed there. The first museum which accepted to collaborate with the Akemid program were Le Louvre and the British Museum, and this department of ancient theorists then directed by John Curtis. I remember of a demo made at the Department of Ancient Neurist in December 2002, where we explained which were the ways and means of the program. Some years later, in 2006, it was also possible, finally, to make available the object and images that this museum had always us to store and to exhibit. It's the Musée Achaemenid, Mavi, Musée Achaemenid Virtuel uh, Interactif. At this point of my talk, I would like to introduce a case study in order to show why and how virtuality can give birth to reality. Thanks to our agreements with the Louvre, with the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, with the Yale Collection, and the Museum of Nino at Leiden, we are able to collect several boule or tags, very alike in shapes, motives, and position of the ceilings of every face and edges. Before the launching of the Mavi, they were carefully studied yeah, in a paper by Wouter Henkelmann, Chuck Jones, and Matthew Stolper, paper published in Arta 2004, an academic journal online. One of the topics treated by the authors was the origin of these objects now scattered in different museums. For the first time, what it, was, it has been very probably only one stock at the origin was even partly and virtually reunited thanks to the virtual museum. The story doesn't end there. Four years ago, a young Assyriologist and collaborator of Akemenet, Gauthier Tolini, who was working at the Ecole Biblique at Jerusalem, noticed that the museum of the Ecole Biblique housed another tag. Yeah. Another, another tag of the same kind. It has to be carefully studied but it looks very like the previous ones. The story keeps on continuing still. One year ago, when we were discussing at Geneva, where the curator of the Musée d'Art et d'Histoire, I discovered that the tags housed there are themselves very close to the tags 
already on exhibition of the Mavi. The photo will be added later on. I very much hope that the story can still be continued. Since 2006, we have been working on the new Akemenet in different ways. First of all, the development of new tools, particularly with the aim, the aim of improving the virtual museum. At the same time, new agreements with other museum institutions. Thirdly, the gathering and indexing of new textual corpus, Demotico Straka, Babylonian tablets, Persepolis tablets, and so on. For that, the Collège de France has provided the Akimini program with a number of PhD candidates and postdocs during the years 2005-2012. It has been an invaluable help. All this new corpus will be available on the new Akimini. Here it is, which is the result of an entire refurbishing. We are by now in the very last phase, and I can reasonably foresee that it will be accessible within a very short while from now on, let's say a few weeks. Apart from the help offered by the Collège de France, I would like to address my warmest thanks to sponsors in France, in the States, and the, in the UK, more especially the very organizer of this conference, the Iran Heritage Foundation and the Sudavara Memorial Foundation. Moreover, since 2012, after my retirement from the Collège de France, the Academic Program has moved from the College to the Louvre, thanks to an agreement between these two major cultural institutions in France. It means that Akemenet has now its own space at the Département des Antiquités Orientales, its own library, its own budget, and still more important, its own editorial secretary. My collaborator at the college, Salima Aman, has now got a fixed position at Le Louvre, and she's in charge of dealing with the database and the website and of editing papers and books produced by the Akimenet program or published under the auspices of the program. So by now, the future is secured and you can assume that the program and the website will be stable for the next decades. Inshallah. I now come back to the new Akimenet. Uh, that I will present uh, with a few, few, few slides focusing on the novelties. As you can see, the main change in the inclusion of the uh, Akimid Museum within the Akimid website. So that there is now one and only one website as expected since the very foundation of the program 15 years ago. Within the textual sources here, uh, one finds already existing ones, particularly the Babylonian tablets, and one so finds new corpus. I will present briefly. First of all, the Persepolis fortification tablets, currently housed by, at the Oriental Institute of Chicago, on, on loan from the National Museum of Iran, are being scrutinized, analyzed, studied, and published by the team of Chicago under the direction of Matthew Stolper. The new editions are published on the site of the Persepolis Fortification Archive Project. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, that's complicated. Yeah, which is a website uh, which is uh, only for highly specialized uh, researchers. And part of the tablets and photographs are also available to, on two American websites, Inscriptifact and CDLI. The Richard Allocks preliminary transliterations are edited by Walter Enkelmann. Uh, who, thanks to an agreement with the Chicago program, is putting an edition translation on a Akemenet along with photographs. 
here a page, entry of a, of a, of a special entry of the Fasipolis fortification tablet. And if you click on one of the photo, you can have a look on the tablet particularly with uh, all the photographs, there are also at least eight or 10 photographs for each tablet, each tablet, and you can give, get your indexing. And if you click on the photo, you can have a, if you have a tool which allows you to define yourself an area that you would like to have a, a zoom. So, for example, this is a zoom on the upper part of a tablet and uh, it allows you to check the readings by the author and Kenman, for example. It, it will be very useful for people working on the tablet, of course. At the moment, the, the number of tablets on a is 2006, 206, sorry, and the plan is to publish all the set in the coming months and years. The second new corpus is the collection of uh, Demotic Ostraka from Ain Manawir in the Western Desert of Egypt in 1992. A village was discovered there by archaeologists. Village with its, uh, its houses, its fields, its temples, its uh, irrigation canal and in the temple, an archive of two, uh, 460 demotic ostraca that you have here, and you can, and the ed edition will be the Editio Princeps of this ostraca, that never been published before, and it has been done by Michel Chauveau and uh, Damien Agut, which, uh, and the ostraca is presented the same, in the same form, and you can also click on one of them, for example, and have this ostraca here with the translation and the translation. And you, you have also search engine in order to detect words and so. And you can also click on the photograph and have a, get a detail of it. It will be very important from, for demoticists in order to study those tokens and to, to, get, to give feedback to the editors before the edition on paper. The entry on archaeological sites is partly, partly existing, partly entirely new. Uh, the entry Sousa is completely new and I would like to give some explanation. And made up thanks to the new editorial tools for one part and thanks to the scientific investment of the archaeologist Rémi Boucherla on the other hand. It is far from being the simple replication on the internet of a recent book edited by our late friend and colleague Jean Perrault. The principle defined by Rémi Boucherla in the following statement. Due to their topographical layout, the vestiges can be presented separately, even though the remains of a royal city form a wall. I just give an example. You have this, uh, this presentation of a general map of the of city, of, and on the left and on the right, some uh, images were closely linked to the map. And so you can click on, on one of these images here, you can get this one, and you get back to this one, and you choose to visit, for example, the Shaw, Shaw Palace. Here it is. So you, you, get, you get a new plan, and every time you can, you can get a closer look on each part of the buildings, and on the right side, left side, you have eye images which are closely associated to the, to, the, to the palaces and to the building. For example, this one here, and you can click on and get uh, detail of this uh, 
of this uh, part of a staircase and you can have a zoom on part of, uh, of the object. Yes, so, <clears throat> and you can get every, everything like that. Yes. Ah, already five. So I, I will just show the, so I am going to very fast. So there is a, the example of a fish. It's an object coming from, coming housed in the British Museum with all the description, indexing, and possibility of zooming of every part of the object in order to have a, st a very close st uh, scrutinizing of the object. An important rem remark concerning the Akimin Museum. Quite a number of museums do accept the principle of a collaboration with a cabinet. I never met any refusal. It is more difficult to put the principle into action. The main reason is that skippers and curators are overbuzzed. One solution can be to hire a PhD candidate or postdoc who would be in charge to work at the museum for one or two years at the interface with a cabinet. Exactly what it happened with the Oriental Institute of Chicago. The work of gathering, indexing, and photographing a community object housed in the museum of the Oriental Institute is now on its way, as you can see here, thanks to a double agreement between a cabinet, uh, Le Louvre, and the Oriental Institute on the one hand, and on the other hand, between the Louvre and the Roshan Foundation. The foundation has provided a grant to a PhD candidate with himself working in the Persepolis tablet for his thesis. The Oriental Acuminate project uh, was born under this patronage and is going very well. I attested by the monthly report of the student and the provisional paper is published in the Oriental Institute news here. Since it turned out that this work would la should last for two years and not simply one, another American foundation, the French Chicago Center, has very recently accepted the principle to give another grant to the same PhD candidate for the year 2015-2016. At the end of 2016, Akemnet should have a photograph plus the indexation in the database, and at this date, of the very beginnings of 2017, all the Akemid object of the OI Museum should be accessible through the Akemid website and the OI website at the same time, of course. As everybody can guess it, my deepest hope is that this modus operandi might be applied at other museums in the world as well. Uh, <coughs> Uh, as for the iconographic, iconographic resources entry, it has been considerably enriched, enriched with dozens of drawings from books by travelers to Persepolis and other sites. Drawings and also photographs, for example, the photograph taken by the German photographer Franz Stoltz, which can be enlarged as well. Several other new corpus have been acquired through agreements with other museums, for example, two small and quite ignored French museums, one in Besançon in eastern France, the other one at Rochefort near La Rochelle. Besançon is a hometown of a very famous architect of the 18th century, Pierre Adrien Paris, we never went to Persia, but he had a copy of Lebrun's travel in his library. Not only he watercolored the drawings by, by Lebrun, but more interestingly, uh, he commented on correcting Lebrun and trying to imagine the plans of the Persepolis buildings and with many explanations. These drawings and have never been published and I hope 
that with Remy Bouchala we are able to publish them in, uh, in the near future. There will be online. The second one, example, in uh, Rochefort. Rochefort is the hometown of Pierre Lotti, who is very well known for his novels. And on his way back from India, he traveled through Persia and has stayed at Persepolis. He was a very good photographer. And at Rochefort, there is a collection of uh, photos by, by Lot Pierre Lotti, this one particularly, taken in Persepolis in nine, 1900, taken by someone else than Lotti, since he is there, Pierre Lotti on the fresh hold of the gate of GSS at Persepolis in 1900. Uh, Disseminating uh, information about their community cultural heritage imply also to use more traditional ways as books and journals. In 2002 was founded the first journal entirely specialized on the Achaemenid period, its name Arta, and published online. You can see some statistics on the right side of the slide. Uh, this, uh, yes, okay. As for the books, in 2001 was uh, founded a new series, Persica. From this date, 18 volumes had been published, among them the proceeding of the archaeological conference in 2003, now translated into Persian. The 19th volume will appear within some weeks, and two other ones are planned for the, uh, 2015. To put an end to this tour, I might say to this grand tour, I will come back to my 2006 presentation of the new Mavi website on the ICOM news. I wrote that, I just quoted part. In other words, a genuinely virtual museum makes a direct contribution to the work of safeguarding a unique cultural heritage. Like any museum of cultural undertaking, its work is never complete. Not only will better computer tools be available in the future, but the collections of a virtual museum will constantly be added to with the help of all the museums throughout the world which have already agreed to take part in the adventure. Our hope is that Mavi will be seen as a model which can easily be adapted to other sets of cultural heritage. To replace Mavi with a Kemenet, it gives a real image what, of what was, is, and will be our ambition for collecting and disseminating information about Iranian cultural heritage on the web. Of course, this program can be realized only with the collaboration of colleagues and researchers, cultural institutions and sponsors. It is the reason why I really end my talk with renewing the call for collaboration that I sent out everywhere in 2001. Thank you very much.